Hey everyone, this is a review of the Milwaukee M12 Fuel Hatchet Pruning Saw model number 2527. I'm really happy to say, after over a year ago with my prediction uh, from the Milwaukee patents, this thing is a reality and I finally got my hands on one. So I'm going to cover all the features this has, test out what it can do, and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So here's the tool up close. One of the big differences between uh, the patent drawings and the actual implementation of this is they've added these two hand guards here and here. I can see why they did it from a safety perspective. It does add quite a bit of bulk to the tool, but if you do, if you do get kickback, you want your hand protected here in case you let go, uh, and you don't want that going straight into the blade. So I see why they added these two guards. Um, and the chain they use as well is uh, a full house chain, which means it's got a cutter on every link. That's good for small branches where you don't need a lot of chip clearing. Uh, it's also less prone to vibration and less prone to kickback. The trigger has a safety that you have to depress every time you turn it on. I found myself pushing it with my index finger a lot and then activating the trigger with my middle finger. Uh, you could also get away with pushing it with your thumb and activating with your index finger here. It's just a little bit more of a stretch for me uh, with the M12 handle. Um, so I ended up doing this and sometimes I'd slide this index finger back down once I started cutting too. This lends itself pretty well to cutting with one hand. You still gotta respect it quite a bit because it is a chainsaw. Um, and it's actually really comfortable to hold with two hands as well. Your thumb kind of fits right here. There's plenty of room for gloves uh, if you're wearing gloves and this big hand guard. Uh, and I think they made this a little bit uncomfortable like this so you don't actually grab it here and you actually grab it underneath. So I think that's the only thing I can think of why this is designed that way. On the back side, you've got the oil reservoir for the automatic chain oiler. Uh, I filled this up with bar oil when I started with a four amp hour battery. When the battery was dead, this was almost empty. Uh, so you do need to fill it up every time you change out batteries. If you've got a six amp hour battery you're using with this, you might want to check it in between and keep an eye on it. It does have a translucent area right here, so you can see how much oil is left in it. As far as leaking oil goes, I set this down uh, in my garage afterwards for 48 hours after I had used it. There wasn't much oil left in it, uh, and there wasn't any oil spotting on the garage floor, but there was a film of oil around here, and I had cleaned it off before setting it down. So it does leak a little bit of oil, but the way this sits, actually, if you sit it upright, it doesn't actually touch with this surface right here, so it's gonna be a lot longer until you actually leak oil on something. On the bottom here, you've got the Strench onboard storage, uh, and it's actually pretty firmly held in. You, there's two motions you gotta do. You gotta pop it out like this, and then you've gotta pull it out. So it's really securely in there. It's not gonna fall out uh, you know, without you noticing or without you actually taking it out of the tool. You've also got a keyhole slot right here if you wanna hang this up in a garage or a shed when you're done cutting, just fits a standard screw. Maintenance on this is really easy. You've got your chain tensioner screw right here and your cover nut right here. You just take the scrunch and loosen this up. You can see here, this is machined aluminum uh, and this is all metal in here. You got all metal bucking spikes attached right in here. When you're putting the cover back on, you can crank it down pretty hard thanks to this metal bushing they have in here. So you're not gonna crush this plastic piece. Tensioning the chain is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just leave this nut a little bit loose and then turn the screw until you take the slack out of the chain. And you wanna get it tight enough that when you pull, it comes out about an eighth of an inch and then snaps back. Uh, so that's about right, maybe a little bit tighter. There we go, you don't want this loose. And then crank this down. All right, let's talk performance. As far as power goes, Milwaukee specifies the max cut on this is a three inch diameter hardwood branch. Uh, this can easily do that. Uh, up, I found about above two and a half inch diameter. If you weren't paying attention and you just push this really hard, you could stall it. Um, and, but I easily cut five and a half inch diameter branches with this if I paid attention to how much pressure I was putting on it and let the saw do most of the work. Uh, so it, when you're getting up in the, the larger specification of what this can cut, yes, you can stall it. Uh, it's not gonna be the powerhouse that the M18 chainsaw is, but it does a good job for the purpose designed size of branches of, of pruning limbs that are smaller than, than you're gonna wanna cut with a full size chainsaw. As far as runtime goes, uh, I, was, I was actually really impressed with this. I cut just about an hour with this and now that was moving around branches, relocating stuff, and occasionally setting up my tripod in a different spot for a different camera angle. Um, so it wasn't continuous cutting, but it was fairly close to a real world scenario for how much you'd be cutting on and off and then setting it down and rearranging branches and moving things. Um, so 
In that time, I did 156 cuts in various diameters from one inch all the way up to about five inches. Uh, and it, it did great for all of those. And it actually exceeded the stated cut time of 120 cuts in two inch oak. Now I wasn't always cutting two inch oak, but I was cutting stuff bigger than that. And I was cutting stuff smaller than that as well. So that was all with a four amp hour battery. With a six amp hour battery, you'll get even more performance. Uh, and if you just bring one or two extra M12 batteries, I think you'll get a lot of cuts with this and be pretty satisfied with the duration the batteries last. Now I've seen a lot of people ask and comment about how this thing's gonna compare against a reciprocating saw with a pruning blade. So I did a test with the M12 fuel chainsaw the M18 fuel chainsaw, the M18 Sawzall, not the Super Sawzall, and the M12 Hacksaw. That is the non-fuel version because unfortunately I don't have the fuel version. So that's the brushed M12 Hacksaw. So I did a head-to-head -head comparison on the same branch. I cut several different cuts with each of these saws and then took the fastest time from each of them. For the two Sawzalls, I used a brand new pruning blade of the same exact type. The results were pretty surprising. This M12 fuel chainsaw held its own against the M18 Sawzall. Uh, they were almost exactly the same cut time, right around five seconds. Of course, nothing touched the capabilities of the M18 chainsaw, which was through the branch in about two seconds. Uh, the, the, this thing absolutely destroyed the M12 hacksaw, though. That thing took 35 seconds to cut through that branch, which is a little bit over two to two and a half inches. Uh, so this this is, for the same battery platform, this is night and day different performance uh, versus that brush Sawzall. Now I expect the M12 fuel Hacksaw to do a lot better than that, uh, just because the, the M12 fuel Hacksaw has a 7 8 inch stroke length at 3,000 strokes per minute, and the M12 regular brushed version has a half inch stroke length at uh, 3,000 strokes per minute. So I would expect the M12 fuel version to do it in 20 seconds or possibly less uh, depending if it doesn't bog down as much due to a stronger motor. So applications this thing shines in is when you've got a, you know, maybe you've taken down a tree and you've got the big stuff taken care of and you want something small and lightweight that's easy, easily maneuverable and you can use one-handed to cut up the smaller things on it. Uh, this is going to be a great solution for that. Uh, it's not a sawzall replacement. Obviously you can get blades that cut through metal uh, and you can cut nail embedded wood with a sawzall. You can't do that for this. This is only for clean wood because it's a chainsaw. Um, so if you're only cutting the occasional down limb in your yard, I think a sawzall or a hacksaw is a better solution uh, because it's way more versatile. But if you're doing a lot of limbing, if you're doing a lot of cuts that you, you normally use a sawzall for or a hacksaw, if, if you've got an M12 hacksaw, this is gonna beat it hands down. Um, this, is, this is way better at that application if you're doing that application a lot. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this tool. I think it does exactly what it's designed to, and that's prune small branches. It's not meant to take down big trees or anything like that, uh, but if you use this for its design application, it does really well with it. Price point on this is 180 bare tool or $250 with a four amp hour battery kit. Uh, so that's getting a little bit high for an M12 tool. Most of them aren't quite up in that range. Um, but this is a specialty tool, and if you want something like it, it's the only one out there right now uh, that's got the, the six inch bar and the capabilities it has. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the video description so you can price it yourself. So hopefully this review is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.